And like you mentioned, this storm is very, very big. In Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Chris Cuomo, who's in North Myrtle Beach, this is our special coverage of Hurricane Florence. And today it begins. After days of warnings and more than a million evacuated, the Carolina coast are now feeling the first band, just the first inkling. What could be the worst storm to hit this area in almost 30 years? This is a huge, huge storm. Moments ago, a new set of data just released on, on how powerful the hurricane is, where it's headed. While its winds are slightly weaker, that's good news, the area it's predicted to pummel has now gotten bigger. It's actually doubled in size from initial forecasts. It's gotten twice as large. Here's a taste of what's headed to the coast. Listen to what winds sound like at just 55 miles an hour. The winds are just one of the storm's triple threats. This area could see a catastrophic storm surge reaching as high as 13 feet. The downpour is expected to be <clears throat> relentless. One projection estimating 10 trillion gallons, gallons of, of rain will fall before Florence is finished. Just here in Wilmington, uh, they're talking about getting eight months worth of rain over the next three days, and they've already had uh, a lot of rain this year. We're covering Hurricane Florence up and down the coast and inland, as only CNN can, with crews uh, all over uh, these states. But first, let's go to the CNN Weather Center, our meteorologist Jennifer Gray. So the National Weather Center Service, Jennifer, just issued its 2 p.m. Eastern update. What have we learned? The storm is maintaining its intensity. It still has winds over 100 miles per hour. 105, gust of 125, moving to the northwest at 10. It is expected to slow down, as we've been talking about. And the fact it's going to sit here for 24 to 36 hours, uh, a lot of structures aren't going to be able to take a beating like that for so long. And that's the scary part about this storm. The winds aren't going to matter as much knowing if they're 105 or 120 because it's the duration of the storm that makes this one so unique because structures could withstand 100 mile per hour winds if the storm comes and goes but is expected to make landfalls a category two 100 mile per hour winds tomorrow morning and then sit along the North Carolina coast uh, Friday afternoon into Saturday Saturday afternoon possibly pushing into South Carolina so the storm surge the flooding is what is the hugest concern with this storm storm. Only 8% of people die from wind in, in tropical systems and hurricanes. More than 75% of the people die from the storm surge and the water. And that hasn't changed regardless of the category. The storm is so big and it has so much momentum and all of that is heading towards the coast. Those outer bands already reaching the coast. And so it's all downhill from here. This has begun. We are starting to see the first impacts and the storm, the center of the storm is still about 100 miles from Wilmington. And the rain is going to be relentless. 20 to 30 inches of rain expected over the next several days as this storm parks itself. But let me remind you that storm surge is going to be one of the biggest threats with this because it is going to last through several high tide cycles. The tide is going to come up and Anderson, the tide won't be able to come back down because the water is continuing to push. And so the storm surge is going to pile on itself over the next 24 to 36 hours. And I was looking at one of the river gauges near where you are, near Wil Wilmington, and it's forecasted to reach a record, as we were talking about earlier, at 24 feet, higher than Floyd. And at that level, many of the roads are going to be impassable. Several of the roads will be under seven feet of water, and many of the homes in that area will be inundated. And that's one of the biggest fears with this storm. There's a good chance that the eye of this hurricane could make landfall right here or just north of here. 
The track just out from the National Hurricane Center tonight, the storm is slowing down, which means it will sit here and pound the coast. Dangerous winds and several feet of rain. It's also growing in size, that flag whipping in the wind tattered by the end of the day. David, we're bracing for potentially catastrophic storm surge here, possibly up to 11 feet. These bands are just getting stronger, as you can probably tell. The rains and the winds really picking up out here. We're near the mouth of the New River. It runs from the coast all the way up through the city of Jacksonville. These waves, they're just crashing right over this dock, and a lot of this water is going to get pushed inland, and it's going to create a lot of flooding. We've spoken with emergency officials. They are prepared for an unprecedented amount of rain right around three feet, and they say that if you live in this area and you have not evacuated, the window for that has closed. David? Just look at this pier. The 9 to 13 foot surge isn't anywhere near here yet. We have almost 24 hours for it to develop. Griff, we're all looking at this shot with you right now. And if we're just at the beginning here, that's going to get a whole lot worse. Main road of Atlantic Beach, it parts. It is not quite a river yet, but certainly a small stream. The rain obviously continuing, which means these waters will only rise, especially as the tide starts to come back in. This is just one of the businesses that is completely destroyed here. You can see top rows of windows blown out. The roof, according to the fire department, is blown out. And there was the front door. Now anyone can just walk through. Another issue, of course, is the rising waters, Neil. They continue to rise in the barrier islands that would normally protect this part of North Carolina from this storm are acting as a funnel for these rising waters. And that is what's pushing all of this water up into places like Wilmington and New Bern and Washington. <laughs>